A lot of heat coming off this bike. Hey everybody, it's Dick here. Today I'm riding the all new 2022 Indian Super Chief Limited. The Super Chief Limited is powered by a 116 cubic inch or 1890 cc Thunderstroke V twin engine. The air cooled engine has acclaimed 120 foot pounds of torque and a whopping 79 brake horsepower. It has a six-speed transmission, 46-millimeter front telescoping forks, dual externally mounted rear shocks with adjustable preload, a single 300-millimeter floating rotor four-piston caliper on the front, and a single 300-millimeter floating rotor two-piston caliper on the back. The Super Chief Limited has 16-inch spoked wheels on the front and back. It comes with saddlebags, a windshield, running boards, and a four-inch TFT display where riders can adjust the bike to to its three rider modes and access its integrated satellite navigation system. Let's see how this behemoth rides. So the chief is now keyless. This little fob hides somewhere in your pocket, don't lose it. The Indian TFT is now integrated into this round dial. You got thunder and lightning. It's loading. This is all touch screen. We got gauges. You can switch gauges between these two gauges. We got bike stats battery voltage, fuel economy, mileage, range for fuel, <laughs> weather. You can get stats on your riding including elevation, distance, moving time, stop time, overall ride time. This bike has 64 miles on it. It's got integrated sat nav. Here we are. It's finding where I am. I'm on the coast here at sunny Bournemouth. Uh, what else? Controls. I have three riding modes. Standard, Tour, which is apparently tame, and Sport, which is pretty torquey, I'm told. I rode down to the shore on Standard. It seemed fine. Tour, I'm told, puts a really lazy throttle response. I don't think there's traction control on this. I'm pretty sure most Indians don't have traction control, so I'm pretty sure that this is all about throttle response. I'm going to keep it in standard for the first bit of the ride. <laughs> Just before we set off, I want to show you how ridiculous this kickstand is. I have about a 30-inch inseam, and I'm struggling to get the end of the kickstand to kick it up. And these boards, these running boards, are like size 14s. So I just turned it off. <laughs> I turned the power mode off trying to turn the bike on. So this works with gloves, which is helpful. Hey everybody, it's Dick here. I'm on the all new Indian Super Chief. It is a 116 cubic inch push rod V-twin. It's set inside a tubular frame, which is unusual for Indian other than it's FTR and it doesn't have all of the accoutrement all of the fairings and dashboards and speakers and all of the weight and 
all the shit that has kept me off of large displacement Indians in the past, it's actually a very, well not very, but a reasonably life motorcycle compared to their other offerings. I am not a fan of the push rod motor. I always feel, unless the sound of the engine is being masked by some really nice rumbly pipes, and for stock Euro 5 pipes, these pipes sound pretty good, especially on the kind of vacuum induction that you get when you roll off the throttle. I always feel like a pushrod engine V-twin is gonna just rattle itself to death. I always feel like something's wrong with it. This has 64 miles on it, so I'm pretty sure nothing's wrong with it. It just is the nature of the pushrod engine. It's not as torquey as the Scout. I'm in standard mode. It has three riding modes, tour, which is tame, standard, which is what I'm in now, and sport. It's got this TFT display that is actually quite nicely nested in that round dial there so that we don't have to look at a little Game Boy or a, a Samsung Galaxy something or other. It's, I don't know, I, I'm always underwhelmed by big American V-twins. I do kind of like these sweeping handlebars. It's a shiny cruiser. It's a shiny cruiser a la, 19, no, 2002. And we're, and it's a 2022. So we're, we're about 20 years behind the curve on this. It is Euro 5 compliant, so it's gonna, it's gonna replace all of those defunct Harleys that can't meet or don't wanna meet Euro 5 standards. If I open it up, if I trust the fact that the engine won't fly itself apart, that's where it is. It's a big, it's a straight line highway cruiser. I got lots of vibrations in my ass, way up in my ass. Holy cow. Fanny, you should sit on this. Holy cow, that was a lot of vibrations. This is not rev very high. Oh, I'm gonna turn off the map and see if I can get some rev settings, gauges. There we are. 3,500 RPM. Well, I'm getting lots of vibration. I'm sorry I'm getting distracted by vibrations right off the bat, but 2,500 RPM up to 3,500 RPM. Very torquey, very fast, but 4,000 RPM is rattling itself apart and I'm getting sexually satisfied in my anus right now. This thing could turn me gay. Under 2,000 RPMs, it's boring. Yeah, I took it out out of curiosity and out of courtesy. And I'm about as impressed with it as I thought I'd be. These things don't really float my boat. I was told that these unfaired large displacement cruisers are being offered by Indian because the Scout gets a bad rap. The radiator on the Scout, the frame on the Scout, it gets a bad rap. The weight is really great on this. The balance is really great on this. I'm sorry to keep jumping around, because this is how I get to know a bike. You can feel the weight is really low. It's about 50 kilos more than a Scout, but it feels as light. It's a bit taller in the seat. The seat's more comfortable than the Scout. Scout seat gets me right in the coccyx. It's, uh, uh, it's bothersome in the coccyx after about an hour. This thing is, it cups my ass a little better. Standard mode, the fueling is very off on. It's very jerky. You can see the suspension dive when I, when I roll off the throttle. I am in first gear. Let's see. No, second gear, same thing. The throttle, is, the, the fueling is as, as choppy as the other Indians I've ridden. I am on a big fat cruiser and I do feel comfortable filtering through here. 
So there's something to say about the balance and the weight and the narrowness. These are big sweeping handlebars and my feet are way out on these size 14 platforms. You know, it, Indian, in its scouts and its FTRs, has said, Harley who? And then, this is a bit confusing to me, this, this exercise in the chief. Even with their big fared chief and chieftains and Springfields and all their other bullshit, it was always, it was always like, ooh, Polaris has uh, put their own victory stamp on the Indian brand and they went, Harley who? But this is definitely a Harley chaser. This is, this wants to be a Harley. This wants to replace the Harley, I think. It's got a pushrod motor. It's using the 116. Formerly the Chief was a 111, 111 or 112. But it's using the cubic inches so you don't scare people with the, with the CCs on this. It's probably 1800 CCs. But this is definitely like, oh, oh look, look, uh, that looks just like a Harley. Which seems like a backpedaling a bit on the Indian Polaris or the Polaris Indian playbook. I think they have something really special in the Scout and as long as they don't get apologetic about it, they can go pretty far with it. I think this is, this reminds me of any of those Harleys that Fanny test road when she was looking her for her bike and I and and I know why she chose the scout over those Harleys because there's so much more character there's so much more power there's so much more grunt it's heavier than the scout so you don't it doesn't feel as torquey doesn't feel as fast it's got a longer wheelbase and it's taller so it's kind of this lopey, lopey cruiser that can go fast in the quarter mile on a straight line. I'm trying to get it out on the highway to see maybe, maybe that's where it is. It's a highway cruiser. It's got a windshield. It's got bags. This is the Super Chief, top of the range. Every Chief comes with this TFT display, which the more I'm riding this thing, the less I know I'll be using it. So I kind of miss old needles and dials but there's a lot of good information packed into that little rondel there so i don't hate it i don't hate it the transmission feels like an old cruiser you clunk 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 I'm pushing the indicator, but self-canceling indicators. So that's pretty neat. It's interesting the technology that they've poured into this because I think most of the time the American bikes don't really offer the technology that the European bikes offer or the Japanese bikes offer. But this is offering a bit of technology, no traction control but you got some rider modes that affect the throttle response. I hate these windshields though because I never know whether to look over it or under it. I get this kind of parabolic thing happening. With my height, I'm looking right at the seam of the windshield. I end up getting this kind of double vision of the rim of the windshield and I don't really feel how fast I'm going either. I, I've always taken windshields off of bikes that I have because I like the feel of wind. Air-cooled, air-cooled engine so you don't have the radiator that people complain about on the the other Indians. So again, you know, an apologetic choice. Like, oh, I'm sorry, there's a radiator. I don't know what they did to this air-cooled engine to meet Euro 5 to keep it air-cooled. But it's air-cooled and I can feel the heat. I'm wearing kind of insulated riding gear right now because it was cold coming down to the coast and I can feel the heat through the pants. So the engine's really hot. There's a huge 
engine cover on my left side, on the clutch side. And I can only imagine it's that kind of primary drive that these push rod motors have. But it's big and fat and my short legs hit it right below the calf when I try and put my feet down. Now, fourth gear, 2,500 RPM, 50 miles an hour in this average speed zone. The exhaust is deafened by the wind noise and the engine just kind of rattling like loose nuts and bolts in a toolbox between my legs. Fair amount of vibrations in my arms, fair amount of vibrations in my feet, and an uncomfortable amount of vibrations in my crotch and ass. 2,500 RPM. Hopefully I get out of this 50 mile an hour zone to a 70 and I can really open it up and see what it's like in top gear and what the vibrations are like. But at the moment, I'm not very impressed. The brake pedal down here is way high. I have, that's what needs to be adjusted if it's possible. There's a little brake reservoir very close to where the brake should be resting. I don't know if you can see it down there. But I gotta lift my leg to get that brake. Because my little size 10s are, it's, it's a struggle to get that brake. I'm told that the base model comes with, or anything other than the Super Chief, comes with forward pegs. The base model comes with mid-set pegs. And with these vibrations that I'm feeling in the footboards, I think my feet would be very uncomfortable. I might be feeling more vibrations in my feet because I couldn't find my boots this morning. I'm wearing my New Balances. <laughs> so that might have, that might be a bit of an excuse of why I'm feeling so much vibration in my feet right now, but there's no excuse for how much vibration I'm feeling in my throttle hand. A lot of part spin stuff shared with the Scout. These mirrors are on the Scout. I've seen those, actually there's nicer, there's nicer indicators on the Scout. Standard grips from the Scout. So I'm uh, a bit underwhelmed. And, and I'll tell you why I'm even more underwhelmed. I like the Indians because they undercut, or they used to undercut the Harleys in price. This thing is 20,000 great British pounds. Now you can, you can add the COVID inflation to that, and you can add the Brexit inflation to that. But even the COVID inflation and the Brexit inflation that we've been seeing in other items does not really justify a stripped down cruiser. Cruisers with all the fairings and all the bullshit on the Challengers, they were expensive at 17. And so to get on this, oh my coccyx is getting a bit uncomfortable. I said this was a more comfortable seat than the Scout, but the vibrations are really going right into my coccyx here. Maybe the mid-set controls will be more comfortable on this thing. Sit me more upright. But no, I brought my feet back on the ends of those, on the ends of these diving board footboards and I got even more vibrations. So I think it's giving me a sense of what the vibrations would be. Is this national speed limit now? Are we out of the, out of the 50? Everyone seems to be passing me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna, we're gonna open her up a little bit see okay all right that was quick I went from 50 to 70 in, in an instant 4,000 rpm fourth gear 80 miles an hour and climbing this is fourth gear 4,000 rpm I can see why there's a windshield on this because I'm getting lots of wind turbulence coming around that windshield and I think this would be in uncomfortable. But this thing is cooking at 80 miles an hour, sitting very solidly. 4,000 RPMs, 80 miles an hour, fourth, fourth gear. Fill it up to fifth gear. Drops to 3,200 RPM, 81 miles an hour. 
it's settled in nicely. Vibrations have mellowed a bit in the handlebar. Now, I say that, but maybe it's just being masked by the wind turbulence. A lot of vibration in my ass, right in the small of my back and my coccyx, my tailbone. Sitting comfortably at 80. I mean, when you hit 80 at sixth gear on the Scout, that's where the wind turbulence kind of throws you apart. This has a windshield. I think the wind turbulence will be throwing me apart here. Let's go to six gear and see what we got. Oh, wow. 85 in an instant. 90, 3,000 RPM. Six gear. Yeah, this is a highway monster. Still lots of vibes. Still lots of wind turbulence. So without this windshield, I think I would be very uncomfortable and I wouldn't want to be up at these speeds. Rolling back, 3,000 RPMs, 8 miles an hour. Still vibration in the throttle hand. I gotta search for that brake pedal. Engine braking is a bit limp. It's okay when you downshift, but when you're up in that top gear and just you feel like you're freewheeling a bit. Yeah, low speeds, it's just kind of, it's like loose change in your pocket. It's like all those nuts and bolts that you have at the end of a DIY session, rattling around in the toolbox. But when you get up here around 3,000 to 4,000 RPM, you feel you feel where the power is on this bike. Oh my god. Fourth gear, 70 miles an hour, 3,500 RPM, and my whole body is vibrating. Crazy. Lots of vibrations. I kind of know why the, the bigger Indians were all fared like they were, because I can't imagine this thing without its windshield. And without its windshield, it would look like a little beach cruiser. You know, it looked like a boulevard cruiser. First, second gear, thump, 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 thump. Who's looking at me? Who can I see out today? But at the low speeds, it's boring as shit. And out here on the highway at speed, it's you feel where the power is, but British highways are not interesting, so why... And the interesting roads you're not riding 70, 80, 90 miles an hour on. I think this would work in America. But, you know, pin straight highways in America are boring as well, so... I'm a bit confused. Uh, you know, Indian did a, They made a good Harley. <laughs> For seven grand more than a Harley. If this was 13,000 pounds, 15,000 pounds, with all of the extras that the super 20 grand version comes with, maybe. But I still wouldn't be interested. 13,000 pounds, what can you get for 13,000 pounds these days? A lot more bike than this. Yeah, they made, they made a good Harley. Well done, Indian, you made a good Harley Davidson. And you know, since Harley Davidson isn't gonna be making Harley Davidsons anymore, maybe there's, maybe you did it because you saw a gap in the market. Maybe, they, maybe this is the smartest business decision you could have done. But for this motorcyclist, well, I'd, I'd save the money and buy a Harley if I was gonna buy one of these. Yeah, to get the revs up where I want to feel it. I'm in a lower gear, I'm not in top gear. And then I'm really vibing. If I want to be comfortable, I gotta be in top gear and I don't feel that peak power. I've heard a lot of people are dumping their scouts and putting deposits on this, and I can't, I, I don't know why. I think it's, it's foolhardy. What else could I say about it? It's got four shrouds. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Now that I'm out on the highway. Oh, haha. -ha. That's funny. I thought I was flashing this guy to move over. 
Yeah, that's funny. I thought I was flashing this guy to move over because he was sitting in the fast lane with no one in front of him. And I changed the display. This is the display button. I'm cycling through the display. I don't know if it's coming up here. So I wonder how I, how I literally have to reach. I gotta reach across the horn button. So that's a blank button there, the horn here. Reach across the horn button to get to the high beams and low beams. Oh, that. Okay, so if I want to flash, it's the bottom high of the high beam toggle. And you gotta reach across these buttons, this big gauge interface. And with my little trump hands, I gotta reach over there. There's also, oh, I can also, so I can cycle with the trigger. I can cycle with this toggle here. There's a button with a, some music notes on it there. I don't know what that does. Cruise control down here. A power button and a blank button on the top there. I wonder if you're going a certain speed. If it, okay, self-canceling. I'm gonna see how self-canceling works. Still blinking, still blinking, still blinking, annoying the people behind me. So now it's canceled. So a bit longer than my comfort level and my Topic OCD button pushing indicator canceling. So even though it's self-canceling, if I was following someone on this bike, just canceled, or I was on this bike and someone was following me, they would tell me that my indicator, that I forgot to turn my indicator off. Huh. I wonder what, I wonder what made the software engineer let it blink that long. I think with the windshield you can go far and fast on this. I am feeling a bit fatigued on it. I can check my... So on this ride... Oh. It hasn't started anything. So it was paused. It didn't start automatically. So I have no idea how long I've been on the bike. That's interesting. It was paused from when I turned the bike on. 16 inch front wheel. And rear wheel, I think. I think the one in between this has a, a 17 or 18 inch front wheel and a narrower gauge on it. So more like the early Triumph Bobbers. It's got twin outside mounted shocks single disc on the front and for a 116 I don't know why there's a single disc on the front so there's choices that are being made that are definitely economic the metal that they've used on the cylinder heads they got the great old school shape of the cylinder heads but when you look at the metal it's chromed but it looks kind of like pop metal it doesn't look doesn't look high quality. Looks like if you hit it with a ball peen hammer very lightly, it would shatter. The plastics seem a bit cheap. The single disc on the front seems like a budget choice. Mounting twin shocks on the outside of the frame, that's a budget choice. So there are budget choices that I forgave on the Scout because the Scout was more economical for the performance and the power you were getting. But on a 20 grand bike, I, I, can't, I can't condone budgetary choices. Yeah, so I found a turnaround because I'm bored. That's not boring, but my ass is asleep now. Right now, it's being woken up to be raped. I don't know if the camera picks up 
the side mirrors, but they just vibrated like my Enfield. I think my Enfield cost me five grand. The styling of a Harley. The vibrations of an Enfield. I don't know, Indian, I think, give me a needle and a dial. Give me a dual disc. Give me some better vibration dampening. And drop the price by seven grand. Oh, I can't even move in this seat, that's weird. I'm glued to this seat. As a design exercise, they met the remit. If you want an old feeling, old school feeling motorcycle, big displacement V-twin, they met the remit. If you want it in a tubular frame, oh man, I just tried to shift in the seat and I just sent the bike sailing. I can't move in this seat. I don't know what the material of this seat is, but it must be Velcro because I'm stuck to this seat. That's very odd. So it works on the highway. Let me see if I can get into the new forest and see if it's nice. I really wish I could adjust myself in the seat. But every time I do, I send the bike, I feel like I'm gonna down it. Ooh, it's drinking fuel. It's drinking fuel. I was over half a tank when I started. I haven't been riding very long and I'm now under half a tank. It's probably coming up to a quarter of a tank. All right, let's see. Here we go, a little cattle grade action. Welcome to the new forest. Yeah, so snatchy throttle. Oh, maybe I should try out the throttle. Can't get to it. Horsies. Horsies in the middle of the road. So touring, I come off the throttle and I roll on the throttle. Okay. Huh. Not, not as noticeable as I was told it would be in terms of how tame it is. Yeah, the throttle is not as snatchy. So I guess when you're touring and you hit some bumps and you're getting some undulations on the road and you're coming around a curve when your throttle hand does that a little bit when your throttle hand does that involuntarily you're not getting that jerkiness so i think the rider mode is really a workaround from the poor fueling right and then if we go into sport mode sport mode off the throttle holy shit and that's just that's yeah, that's like a bucking bronco. Look at that. That's... No. No, 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 no. I don't like that at all. That is... That's very untamed. And very jerky. So I'm on a bumpy road here. And I don't know if you can see it, but my forks are... My, I'm trying to keep my wrist... Trying to keep my wrist steady. And the forks are diving. With every bump... I do not like sport mode. So yeah, sport mode reminds me of the throttle response on the FTR. So that's just your regular Indian fueling. Yeah, and standard is just jerky, like the Scout. There's no, there's no rider modes on the Scout, and the standard mode is just like the Scout. It's just a bit jerky, fueling's a bit poor. So the touring mode is really their workaround for their poor fueling. That's a bit disappointing. This is one of the best roads through the New Forest. It's kind of windy, windy road, and, and I, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling underwhelmed on it. I feel like if I go faster, well, not only will I be exceeding the speed limit, but if I go faster, I feel like. The bike will be getting ahead of me. You see those videos of those old men on the cruiser coming around a turn and hitting their floorboards and doing a low side slide on it. And I can see a lot of these 
a lot of these are gonna end up on their side where the scout would just soak those up. I think the scout is, the scout's the better Indian. Half the price. Huh, I said the weight was low, but whew. There's a, there's a tipping point that's a lot higher. Right about there, you start feeling the weight. Right in your crotch, like you're, you're kind of struggling to, this is heavy. Right, right there. I, huh, I thought it would be a lot lower. The, ch the Chiefs that were sold when Coca-Cola owned Indian back in the late 90s, early 2000s, you could lay the Chief down on its side, pick it back up with two fingers. I think you could easily drop this thing right there. Ooh. Huh. You could easily drop this thing and you wouldn't be able to pick it up. All right, here we go. All right, so the satin nav sucks. It said, I, f you. So that blows. It said, right turn. God, I can't find this f brake pedal. Okay, catch your f breath, Dick. <sighs> I do not like the sound of this bike. I do not like the feel of this bike. I'm gonna get killed here. I knew a right turn was coming up. I looked at the sat nav, it said I had about 500 feet to go. And then it said I missed it. So that was my turn. And it let me sail right by it. These kind of minimalist sat navs, there's one called a beeline. And everyone's like, oh, it'll tell you where to turn. And it's really good. It's just pointing an arrow and there's no map and it speaks to your phone and all this bullshit. And if you get outside of London, it doesn't know where the fuck you are. After Beeline came out, Triumph tried to put a sat nav into their TFT display. Indian obviously has put one in their TFT display. I think Royal Enfield has put a, a Beeline style one in their TFT display. We're all hanging off where the Compies used to be. So it says I'm, it says I'm 100 feet from my turn. And it jumped down from 240 feet to 100 feet. Now I'm at 18 feet from my turn. So obviously the software is catching up with me. I can't trust the countdown of distance from when I need to maneuver. I did like that it gave me two options. It looked like it gave me a highway route and a twisty route or a local route. I don't know if that's because of where I was. It's similar ETAs or if it's designed that way because it's mounted on a motorcycle. My mirrors, it's like I'm on the Royal Enfield but can go fast. I don't know if you can see the mirrors, but they're goddamn high-speed sex toys. <laughs> Bumpy. It's not plush. Don't. That's a death intersection right there. These are nice little roads, but I, I'd enjoy them much more on a different bike. Oh my God, I'm gonna change the fueling on this. Nope, I gotta go to here, here, here. I wish I could do that easier. And here, and here, then here. So yeah, the, I'm on the touring mode and with the undulations of the road, my throttle hand isn't being fucked with. So there you go. <laughs> so stupid. 
clunk, tick tonk. I do like that feature. Horses, stay where you are, horses. I hope that Colt was laying down and not hurt. All right, Mr. Cow, stay where you are. Oh, Mrs. Cow, sorry. Oh, f you. Some calves. It's a whole herd. Yeah, I would be enjoying this road much more on my Royal Enfield. It'd be just as vibey. That's a lot of gear for an overnight. Holy cow. Kitchen sink. So touring mode is actually quite comfortable. It's got a good throttle response. Suspension is too stiff on this big old cruiser. The transmission is lovely. It's precise, clicks into gear. I'm less bored than I was, but I think it has a lot to do with the roads as opposed to the bike. Oh, look at that jag. Look at that jag. Well, that's interesting. I'm very pleased to say that I got off the bike to see about a quick snack that turned out to be a bit of a failure. And when I turned the bike back on, I started moving and I was like, oh crap, I think I'm gonna have to search for the postcode again and then put it back in. But when I turned the bike back in, turned navigation back on, it resumed the navigation. It stayed in touring mode for me. So that tamer throttle response was memorialized even though I turned the bike off, spent some time off the bike and came back to it. So those are nice little software features that, I don't know if it makes up for the fact that there's a lag in the navigation, but they're nice little features because I hate to turn off the bike and then have to reset things. Oh my God. That was a very confusing fork in the road right there. Gotta catch up with myself here. Most of the time when I'm test riding a bike, I'll get off the bike, take a little break, and when I get back on the bike, I will have a bit of muscle memory. I'll have learned something and my body will have processed it and I'll start applying those lessons that I've learned about the bike and learned about the idiosyncrasies and learned about the, the, the positive qualities and the negative qualities and I'll, I'll, I'll start to be a bit more fluid on it and I'll start to feel a bit more comfortable on it and I'll, I'll backtrack a bit on my initial bad impressions and I'll reinforce some of the good impressions and and then I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll be won over if there is to be any winning over there's some bikes that just are miserable from the from the off uh, I can't but uh, <laughs> trying to adjust in my seat leads me to my point. This is not one of those bikes where I'm being won over after the brake. I feel a bit hesitant around the turns. The slow speeds, it feels kind of empty and weak. The high speeds are too vibey and turbulent. I'm still having issue with where to look on this windscreen. There, there's there's too much to forgive on this bike and it's not it's not a terrible bike it's not terrible but there's so much more to be had for so much less in other bikes this road is being squandered squandered on this bike Ah. birds. This 
thing drank. Drank fuel. I've gone about 40, 50, 60, 60 miles. 60 miles. Just under three quarters of a tank. Well, I was at 64 miles when I started. Now it's at 119, 120. Less than 60 miles. Less than 60 miles. Three quarters of a tank of fuel. Wow. If you like that video and you want to see more like them, hit like, share, and subscribe.